All right, DK Moore decommitted over the weekend. I can't say that I was surprised to see this when this came through. Um, I think Stewie and I were talking before, and Stewie said it best. Anytime you've got to keep telling people that you're committed to a school, that's usually a red flag. Like, I've got no concern about Terry on Francis. Like, he's been committed. He's kept his mouth shut. You start to look up on social media. All he is doing is kind of making plays with 717. By the way, I mean, like, he made a couple of plays over the last couple of weeks that's been put out on, on, on social media. He's, like, jumping over people on 717 fields. And I'm not, you know, don't mean to kind of transition the attention from 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 DK Moore to, to Terry and Francis because I think that's how Francis likes it. I think he's just kind of, like, plays under the radar, does his work, does his job. He kind of plays at a high level. I mean, anytime you're the number one wide receiver in the state of Louisiana, it's always worked out well for, for those guys. Always. And from DK Moore's st standpoint, over the last couple of weeks and months, it's always seemingly been something around his recruitment. And again, I know that these high-level five-star you know, top 10 prospect type guys, number one overall at their positions, is usually, it's a long winding road for start to finish of recruitment. And when it starts to really ratchet up of, you know, the, the intensity uh, of being one of those types of prospects, when it's really getting put on, it's a hell of a, you know, it, it, it's, it's a hell of a deal, man. I mean, it's a it's a lot of games you got to play. It's a lot of kissing ass to people that you regularly really wouldn't have to do this stuff type to do. I mean, it's just recruiting. It's recruiting at the highest level, right? So you know, over the last couple of weeks, hearing DK Moore say, "I'm a thousand percent committed," all right, all right, a right, thousand percent committed. Just tell me you're committed and just move on. Like, if you're going to be committed, just commit, do your stuff, move, on, or don't commit. Right? I mean. They just don't pledge if if you know that I'm not I'm not really done with this stuff. I want to go out there and I want to hear, I want to listen, I want to be wooed. Right. I mean I want to be recruited. And let me tell you one thing first and foremost. I'm not blaming anyone hey. on this. If I was a top ten prospect in the country, I I would make sure and get all of the perks of being a top 10 prospect in the country. And I would not advise him to do anything other than that. But if you come out and say that it's always been your dream to play at LSU. Can't change it. That you've always wanted to be a wide receiver in purple and gold and looked up to Odell Beckham and thought that that would be an opportunity for you to, to do the same thing and have the same chance would be a dream come true, and okay, here it is. <laughs> Giving you your dream. You rub the and magic lamp. Along the way, to support that dream, you bring in players around you, like Bryce Underwood. Dream. Who's the number one player at his position, which just so happens to be the player that gets you the ball. And you guys have an opportunity to be committed together for a multiple amount of years in a class that is shaping up to be, even by LSU standards, one of the tops, if not one of the best that Frank Wilson has ever been a part of. And when you start to say that stuff out loud, I mean, that starts to really move the meter and move and mean things. Yeah. And if that's not enough, if you're a high school football player, and I come to you and I tell you that every wide receiver that is put on the uniform at LSU that has been considered your caliber of prospect, whether it has been Terrace Marshall, Jarvis Landry, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, Malik pick Davis. one, pick one, Brian Thomas, who didn't even play until his midpoint of his sophomore season, who just was a first round pick. While LSU wants DK Moore atop the wide receiver list, and I trust that Cortez Hankton is still probably in the mix with Moore and will keep LSU relevant until the end, 
I don't know what else you could give him. I don't know what else you could tell him other than the fact that Texas has now gotten to a point where they have a prospect list that includes players like Colin Simmons and DK Moore that just say, hey, look, these guys are not leaving. They're not getting out of the state. And whatever it takes, make that happen when you've got a, you know, a trust, a built-up stash of cash like some of these universities do. I think that there's players that the coaching staff puts a premium on that says, hey, we can't lose these guys. You know, like if you're a part of our collective, if you're a part of the person that, you know, okays the the money that's that's being spent, we got to make sure we don't miss Colin Simmons. We can't miss DK Moore. It, whether it's because the uh, of need on the team or just the optics alone of not losing one of the state's top talent in successive years to rivals when you're going into the SEC, I mean, I believe that that makes sense. You know, I mean, I, if I was on Texas's staff, Texas A and M staff, I would I would say, hey, we that may look we we got we got the money. What's well, the optics? You know, absolutely. Same thing with Colin Simmons, like you said, like that's what happened with. It felt like LSU was in the recruiting race, and whenever you're one of the final three hats on the table with the guy from Texas, number one player in that state. And the Texas hat is also on the table. You got to feel like, especially in the age of, and I know people are tired of probably hearing this, but of NIL and what you can do. Texas doesn't want to lose the number one player in their state to LSU anymore. They're going to the SEC. They have to compete. And to do so, they have and they can offer something that's really hard to say no to. And in Colin Simmons' case, it felt like that was a very much a, a weighing factor. And in DeCorian Moore's case, it feels like that's it just couldn't be more obvious. Yeah. Where it's and, and look, I, I I'm committed, but I'll, I mean, I'm gonna take these visits now. I'm gonna go pick up the suitcase, and I'm gonna come back with two. Sure, and, and I'm cool with good it. on you. You know, like I, I think that that makes a lot of sense. And if you're Texas, you have to, right? And I think if you're Sarkeesian, that's that's the plan. Like, hey, we're not losing. <laughs> you know, like we, we can we can negotiate as long as they want to negotiate. Yeah, when it comes to players like this, it is not a, it's not money is no option. And for Sarkeesian and Texas, this is the thing that LSU probably, I would say, was, I guess you would say, most worried about. You lose that bargaining chip of them coming to the SEC of come play against the best. Whenever Texas was in the Big 12 and it was, what, what, Big 12, yeah. And they could, you know, okay, that's fine. Good ball. But the SEC was the premier conference and still is and so for Texas to be able to jump ship and be able to be in the sec now they can say the same thing yeah you get to stay at home and be in the best conference in college football you'll be on tv every saturday all of those things that lsu could sell as far as you're playing against the best competition you're gonna be on tv it's the most coveraged probably part of the sport is sec football now texas can lump themselves into that conversation so it becomes a harder yes for lsu and a harder no to tell texas well, and I, and I think there there is a, a team in uh, Oregon who feels like they have a pretty good chance yeah. here. Ohio State. Somebody, has, somebody in the chat said the Oregon got money too. The Duncanville head coach's son is a coach at Oregon now. So okay, that would be their end. I, I I would still bet on Texas here. Yeah, right. I still think that Sarkeesian is is in this mode of, you know, certain types of players that they just, they're not going to miss. You know, they can't miss, whether it's give him a Tesla truck and, you know, however many hundreds of thousands they want per year, make it happen. I, I just think that, you know, when um, it comes to these types of players, you're in a tough spot from a negotiating standpoint of, of trying to get these deals done. I mean, this is this is where, you know, the, 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 the Kelly comments from a couple of weeks ago come into play. Well, you know, like, I think LSU sits really comfortable at wide receiver. And from DK Moore's standpoint, if you're LSU, you know, you kind of look at Moore and say, there's not much else we can sell you. Right. You know, like, if, if you want to move on, you can move on. You know we want you. Here's the offer. Here's where we stand. You're the guy at the top of the class. But if it's not going to work out, we're LSU. We can move on and go find another wide receiver. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's been proven now for over a decade that 
LSU can produce wide receivers. So while DK Moore would be a hell of an addition to the class, an incredible part and piece of the class, and would probably end up being the centerpiece of the passing game yeah. two years from his commitment, if it's not, if it's not him, it's going to be somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's <laughs> it's going to be somebody else. And I don't want to sound ungrateful for that. I think I, if it was up to me, I'd love to have DK Moore. I'd love to have DK Moore and watch him play at LSU. But if it gets too grimy in recruiting and it's like, uh, you know what, we're tapping out if, if you're LSU and it's on to the next one, well, I trust that Frank Wilson, Cortez Hankton, all the guys that have been bringing these these players in to just move on and find the next one, produce them, and make them a pro. Yeah. And not only make them a pro, make them a first round pick. To be this kind of like a kind of like that situation that happened in 2020 when they had Jermaine Burton, Rakeem Jarrett, Kayshawn. like they had all of them committed, and then Rakeem Jarrett goes to Maryland, Jermaine Burton goes to Georgia. And you see Kayshawn have a better career than both of them. Well, I, Jermaine Burton probably had a better career than Kayshawn to yeah. end. Yeah. Maybe but, the end. Maybe the end. Yeah, but you, but you see Kayshawn have a better career. They than, battled for off-the-field issues, that's for sure. Oh, most definitely. But Jermaine Burton made it out of his. Yeah. But it's just kind of like that same situation where it's like, okay, well, we'll just take the Louisiana kid and All day. bet on him. All day. What, what's what, what, uh, the kid at high? Uh, Zay, 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 Zay Martin, Zay Martin, and then you got Jacob Washington at uh, Shaw. You know, like, and again, I'm not, I'm not saying that if Zay Martin and DK Moore are standing side by side, and I'm at a testing watching them play, that I'm saying, give me, give me Zay. I'm saying that if you want to play, if you want to play a game and you're telling me that we're picking players and you take DK Moore and I get stuck with the kid from U High who's a three-star, I'm good with it. I mean, I, I'm fine. I mean, I, I would I have rather DK Moore? Sure. I mean, like, look at him run. Watch him test. Look at the way he can move. But also, look at the film on the 7-on-7 seven seven with this, this Ryan Clark team and Bryce Underwood team that was just put together with all these LSU commits, look who's making the plays. Look, look who's always in the end zone. It's the Louisiana kids. And it's what we've been talking about now for three years since Brian Kelly has got here. There's no need to fly to Las Vegas to get a DB. You need to fly to Utah to get a defensive end. It's just get in the car... And drive three hours and pick a direction. Really? I mean, you can go anywhere in this state and find someone you can win with. Right? Bernard calls he's a three-star. Okay. Let's see. Right? Just like Justin Jefferson was a two-star and Tyron Matthew was too. I, I know those guys are... Outliers. Outliers and diamonds of a rough, but they sure do pop up a lot more in Louisiana than they do other places. Right? I mean, for instance, we're in Memphis this weekend, and I'm not comparison, but this is the reputation, right? We're playing a team from Memphis on Saturday morning, and this team from Memphis shows up as if they respect the, the whole thing. Like, they got the gear... They got their guys walking in the gym in a single file. They're sitting in the bleachers. They got all their headphones on. They look locked in. I'm looking at our guys, and I'm like, hey, fellas, y'all better be ready to play. Y'all better be ready to play. And so for about five or six minutes of this game, it's kind of too, you know, you're kind of feeling each other out. Well, and then match. we just put our foot on our throat, on their throat. And I'm not saying, but it was almost just kind of this dog mentality, this Louisiana type mentality the balls on the ground we're scrapping for it balls around the rim we're making the plays they're getting boxed out you can see that the physical aspect of the game is kind of beating them up there's a content guy getting content from the game i walk up to him and i'm saying hey man who you with where are you from this I'm, I'm with the team the guy says I'm, I'm with this team from from memphis i don't say anything i've got nothing on that's representing i'm with the red storm 
you know, I'm just kind of sitting there watching the game. It's, it's, like, it's as if it's halftime. He's like, this has not happened to us. This has not happened to us, in, you know, playing up to this point. You know, we're getting punched in the mouth, and we're not responding. We're kind of we're bowing down to the physical aspect of this game. He's like, you know where this team's from? And I said, yeah, we're from Baton Rouge. He's like, oh, my God, that explains everything. He was like, y'all from Louisiana? I was like, yeah. He was like, oh. Baton Rouge? I was like, yeah. He was like, I mean, that, that, that explains everything. You know, I was like, what you mean? He was like, I mean, just people from Louisiana are different. So it's not even us who really believe that and have to push it on people. It's people outside of our, of our state who recognize it. You know, I mean, it's, it's a different type of mentality. It's a dog-eat-dog, dog, you say I can't, watch me show you I will type mental, you know, mental frame that doesn't necessarily travel and doesn't even travel within the, the South. I mean, these kids from Memphis, if you would have picked before the game, you would have taken probably four or five of their players before you have taken two of ours. But when the game got tipped, when the game was was out there, I mean, it was like, oh, this this is really just a different Don't invite class. them back. <laughs> right. Yeah, Get I mean, that it state was out like, of our tournament. Good Lord. I mean, they're they're beating us up. And I think that's that's just the fr- – that's, that's the mentality of a Louisiana athlete. While, again, I'd love to have DK Moore in purple and gold, and it's not over yet. It may work out where he is. I'm just saying if DK Moore goes to Oregon – if he goes to Ohio State, if he ends up at Texas, all right, let's play. Give me Jacob Washington. <laughs> you know, let, give me this. Let's play. Take the Louisiana kid every time. Who is uh, this? Shaw. Jacob Washington from Shaw. Is this this past weekend? Because mm-hmm. I know they had spring games all over the place. All day, like I mean, good lord. See ya. I mean, DK Moore, have yeah, have a great, have, have, have fun a great in college Texas. career. I mean, really, LSU can win with that. And when you watch this kid get drafted before you, you'll be upset. But, hey, sorry. I mean, Terion Francis is a player. Kalik Lockett, I know they've been on. Jamie French. This is my guy. Derek Matthews. My man Look child. At this guy. And that's against Destrahan. Like, <laughs> that ain't no slouch. I mean, I don't even know if he ever gets tackled. So, Can't again. Can't spell decommit without DK. I love the I, I love DK Moore and I'm not and I, I'm not starting to hate on DK Moore. I'm not doing that. What was that? A uh, uh, tiger drop we started? No, I just I just thought of that. It doesn't make sense because you spell commit with the C, but that's where we're at. No, and I think depends the, I, on where you are. Yeah, <laughs> it could be a name, um, but I do think like obviously you want to keep the door open for DK Moore because I don't think he did it the wrong way. No, this to commit that early and then be mm-hmm. like, hey. He pretty much lets you down easy. Yeah, DK He's like, Moore. Look, hey, I'm with you, but right. when I go on the weekends, like uh, I'm, I'm, I'm with single. her too. Right? Yeah, and you know like, I'm texting you. Yeah, exactly. Right. You you number one on the call sheet, but there's numbers beneath it. Right. And DK Moore just happened to be in is the number one wide receiver in the country in the day and age of NIL at its peak. Yeah. We are three years into NIL right now, and it is truly the wild, wild west. Anybody who's told you that this is NIL, it's not NIL. This is pay for play. And DK Moore is the top dog on the board at a, at a position right now in the NFL where the top players are making $25 million a year. I mean, they're making quarterback-type money. So... Am I surprised that DK Moore wants to go out there and shop and and experience and and test and and and, and you know bite a little bit of the apple? No, I mean not at all, not one bit. I would advise DK Moore to do that because this only happens once in your life. Never again are you going to be the number one wide receiver in the country and be recruited for it from all of these colleges. Go get it. Go experience it. Especially when a visit can result in a bag. Like, you don't even have to commit. Yeah. You can just go there and be like, Come all right. You almost, it's almost like you're a, like you're a performer. All I got to like, do is show up. Yeah, you get a performance fee. And you get a, hey, what time do I need to be at the hotel? You get a, a you get you can charge for showing up. Like, I want this, this, and this in the hotel room. Yeah. Lay it all out for me. Like, right. okay, how badly do you want me? I mean, and like, for some schools, be like, what do you Bad. want me not to do it? Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. I don't blame DK Moore at all for 
I'm sure it started to get very loud around him. With, and he could be playing the long game. He's like, watch me commit and then see how hard these other schools come after me. Mm -hmm. And now you start getting different levels of recruitment where it's like, here you go. It's like, okay, cool. And so I don't blame him at all for going to – and there could be also some pressure on that end of if I don't take a visit or what am I missing out on? And then you start hearing what you could get, and you're like, all right, this thing's open. Yeah. And LSU still, I would imagine, it doesn't feel like they're as in the mix. as When you go from, I guess, a commitment to a decommitment, this one feels like you fell farther down the list of him being like, all right, a decommitted, but LSU's still my number one school. It doesn't feel like that in this scenario. It feels like the – the decommitment was the breakup, in a sense. Like you could, I guess you could try to win that DK more. Yeah. Yes, but it feels like this was uh, decommitting, and I'm, I'm doing out, that though. because I yeah. might be going. I mean, other. if you're LSU, I would. But be I'm like, that's what I'm saying. I'd be like, all right. At any other position, I mean, this would be a massive want? story. Yeah. I mean, I'm a supermodel. I'm a supermodel with hot friends. I'm going that to love Antigua. You too. <laughs> I'm going to. You Con. know, like I mean, what do you mean? <laughs> like, if you can find this, what are you going to go play with, Bo Nix? <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, just you don't want to play with Underwood, okay? And that that's the thing, like, when, like that, that was it. That would that would be the part to me. If that if this, if, if this all shakes out and he ends up somewhere else, this part I get. Like, if he ends up back at LSU, you're like, buddy, I get it. Like, you know what I mean? In fact, have your fun. Tell me the stories. <laughs> you know what what I mean? like, How was it? What was the highlight? <laughs> What was the point where How you were like, state you. this is the top of the mountain? Who's who's the best besides me? Like, <laughs> yeah, right. Obviously, I'm the best, but Any trick? who else? Give me number two. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, like, I get it. But, DK, and this message is for you, buddy. Like, listen up. If it's about football, how else could it be any better than what LSU is going to sell you? You want the history? You got the history of Beckham to Chase, to Malik Neighbors. You want the quarterback to play with? What other quarterback exists that is better than Bryce Underwood? You want the coaching staff? Cortez Hankton's the best wide receiver coach in the country. Facilities? Does it matter? I mean, you take Texas, give me Oregon, we'll take LSU. It's all really kind of... The same. same when it comes down to it. But if it's just about football, if it's just football, there's no way that another school could sell DK Moore on this is a better opportunity to succeed on the field. And if you want to be a college superstar, then that's fine. But isn't this whole thing about getting to the NFL? There's no faster track to the NFL of playing wide receiver at LSU next to Bryce Underwood throwing you the ball for three years. So, I mean, like, this this part makes sense to me if he's going to experience all of it. But when it comes back to just the football aspect, there's no way that LSU could be any more forthright of, hey, buddy, like... You want to catch passes from the best for three years and then go make millions and millions of dollars like many before you have done is simple. Justin Jefferson is about to reset the receiver market. Well, I think in Where DK did he go Moore, to school? I think in DK Moore's case. Lewis, did. why can't Jordy just accept DK Moore is getting more money from Texas? Cool. Did, did you listen to the point? Like <laughs> I, I said off the rip that Texas is looking at players and saying, we're just not losing them. Pay them. I get it. But if it's just about football, if it's just about the football, there's no way other you, you, you could sell to more that you have a better opportunity is what I'm saying. If it's just about the football, if it's about the money, I, I, I understand that. I, I get it that he's getting the more money. You know, I mean, it's, that's that's the, probably the deciding factor, yeah. right? Which is cool, but that yeah, you talked about Brian Kelly, like we don't pay for play, and at the wide receiver position, I think that holds true because of what you've been able to do and develop. And if you have a Bryce Underwood come in, that's the one you have to focus on. You can't let that. And I feel, by all accounts, he's locked into LSU. It feels like like you haven't heard anything really of him even taking another visit. Yeah, and so. If you have a quarterback like Underwood, it really doesn't matter if you have a DK Moore. I don't want to say it like that, but I, he can make you. anybody a superstar. Look what I'm, Pat Mahomes did. I'm with you. 
Like those, when you have that transcendent level of talent at the quarterback position, if you got two feet, two arms, and two eyes and two hands, you got a chance to make a play. Right, and you know, I, it is a it is a, a a discussion. I would I would say for these high level guys, it's like, look, do you want to make the money now, or do you want to make the money for the next decade? You know, like you're gonna make you're gonna make a chunk in this window. Like it's it's going without being said. A player like Moore, he's gonna get hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. during his three years of playing college football. I would imagine. But is that the end game? It's like, do you want to max? I I understand you want to maximize this window, but it's like, hey, just give me the best chance to make the most money into my adult career it's like give me a nice stepping stone to step into the so while it yeah i mean i i do understand if texas's pile is is higher it's like yeah i'm just gonna go there right but is it is it so much about just chasing the most the biggest the i mean when it comes down to it is is fifty thousand dollars a difference maker on a player like dk moore I mean, if you're offering four fifty and I offer four hundred, does that fifty really sway you? That's seventeen, eighteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But and I think in DK Moore's case, he knows how good he is. I don't think it really matters where he goes. There's no LSU is going to help elevate my career as opposed to Texas, especially now. Like I said, with them being in the SEC, like he's the number one wide receiver in the country. He's such a he's so good that kind of wherever he goes, it's going to be, I think he's going to get his. He'll be fine. He doesn't need LSU to be able to promote his brand or be this transcendent star. It's both. It's it's kind of both. Yeah. Because of the way that recruiting works now, it's like, you know who he is. He's a five-star number one recruit. That'll, that tag will stay with him all the way up to the draft process. Like what's the number one wide receiver in the country? Like you still hear about like Doriel Green Beckham. Like you still like, Oh, number one wide receiver in the country. Like that just sticks with you for a while. So if he, I would imagine if he goes to Texas, Oregon, wherever, and plays, he's going to get drafted. Like, LSU probably, if he goes there, do you want to compete against guys that might be a one? And at, if DK Moore goes to Texas or he goes to Oregon, I'd imagine he probably slots in It's like, I'm playing day one. And I'm sure he would have played day one at LSU, but he's going to be a focus day one at Texas or Oregon. or I mean, Ohio State is where it probably gets iffy. That's, yeah. a, that's the one that you could probably compare most to LSU in terms of churning out players and putting them in the league. Yeah. yeah, but Ohio State and Texas have the same amount of wide receivers drafted in the last two years. Five. So That's how many LSU has? Seven. And 43 players drafted over that span, too. It's amazing what happens when you get a quarterback for four years. Joe Burrow for two and Jane Daniels for two. Mm-hmm. So. Now Nussmeyer and then Underwood. Like, that wide receiver number is going to go... Yeah, it's just going to I mean, just gonna, keep rolling into I mean, the next one. We're, we're, we're just compounding. Out of the, yeah. We're just right. compounding. And wide receivers going in the draft when you're running the triple Because this year option. you'll have, what, Kyron Lacey, Chris Hilton. And is Hilton, is he a senior? Yeah, this is last year, I think. Is it? I would, I would no, think. No, I think he's a junior, yeah, yeah, a redshirt he junior. junior. He's definitely draft eligible yeah. just because of the injuries. Sure. Mm. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, if he has a year like he could be that Brian Thomas year where you look up and you go, oh, he's not coming back. Right. I mean, like, hey, he's got 18 touchdowns and over 1,000 yards. Yeah, he ain't coming back. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. But though, so that I could see him getting drafted. And Lacey and Mason Taylor's going to get drafted probably also. A three-year starter that he's going to be highly featured in this new offense with Nussmeyer, as we've talked about, because Nuss isn't going to take off for 80 like Jaden did. So it's going to be more of escape and look to throw to somebody maybe that's a check down or you're hot. Right. Mason Taylor fits that role. And he's just an athlete. What, what, what would you think Nussmeyer's longest career run was? What, or it could be. It was in the bowl game, wasn't it? Is it like 22 yards? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say I was gonna say like 25 yards. He's got one. He might have ripped off like. I mean, you know, if the middle of the field opens up and he's able to. Get a little move. Get a little yeah, scram- I mean, run. I, mean ran. I don't want to discount him. I mean, no, I mean, but no, he's, 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 like, he's not a bad athlete. Right. Just like, I mean, he's just following the greatest running quarterback ever. At LSU. At LSU. I mean, he said he was charted at what? 22 miles an hour? 21 miles an hour? Nuss? Yeah. 
Tell us to stop lying. To I don't know. Oh, that's the data. What are you? What, they're wearing these sports bras for a reason. The catapult don't lie. Proof's in the pudding. That's I mean, really I don't know if it was non win aided yeah, or win aided. Right. I don't know what was going on, but the man touched 20. He had one rush for one yard last season. Last year. His career rushing yards are negative. Well, yeah, because it's the sack. Yeah, sacks, you know. sacks take away from that, but, you know. Garrett, that's why our top speed. I'm not lying. He's, he, he only 21.3 miles per hour. He only has five, seven career rushes. So. He's going to get outside the pocket, though. It's going to be a lot of this. A, a lot of this. A lot that's of fine. this. A little red zone reaction. And run the football. Coach. The streak that your team is in the, in the, in the, in the offensive trenches. line, man. Hey, Caleb Jackson, get they don't rolling. make them on trees. Get them rolling, rolling back trees. Then, I am man. excited to hear. I always love to monitor the uh, the pulse of Tiger Stadium when a new regime takes over after two years of Jaden Daniels where you, they finally got over the hump of watching a quarterback that can't run and throw whatever it felt like they didn't understand that it's okay to run at some points. And now to have to go back to the inverse of you're going to hear a whole lot of take off. Yeah. It's like, no, yeah, it's, not what he does. it's not what he does. He's not no, going to do it. He's not going to take off. Be, throw it, Jaden, yeah. throw it. Now it's like, go, run. Drop it down. And, and now that's why it's like, well, the whole field's open. Why don't you just run? Uh, just take off. It's too much space for him. Yeah. So it'll be an interesting flip, a dichotomy of the fan base as it just became used to a dual threat quarterback. Have to go back to the old slinger. Mm. 